On the PS3, Black Ops 2 just got the most significant patch so far, and it's coming to the Xbox on Saturday. This patch has impacted a lot of changes on how the game plays, and then there's also a bunch of bug fixes. So a ton of stuff has changed in this game. The description of this video will have a list of the changes in there if you prefer it in text form, or you can watch out, hang, you know, watch the video, and see how, uh, you know, my opinions on the patches. So let's start. Score streaks. The UAV cost has increased from 350 to 425, which is about an extra kill. You know, I love running the UAV. I ran the UAV in just about every game I've ever played in Black Ops 2. It's a team kill streak. It's a good thing. It helps you win the games. I liked it. Um, I get that lots of people ran the UAV and it seemed like it was up almost constantly. I don't know what to make of this. I, it hurts me personally, but it might be right for the game. I don't know. Lightning Strike added 700 millisecond delay. That's bullshit. I hate that. I, I hate that freaking lightning strikes or air strikes or that drop on the Harrier in all of COD history has always been freaking worthless. This is the first game in which if you're losing B and you drop an airstrike on it, you can actually save B. And now that's gone. Now that's bullshit. It's just gone. Because you're losing B, you drop an airstrike. By the time the thing lands, you'll have lost the flag. And that... I, I can't tell you. I, I hate it. I hate it. This is a stupid decision that they've made. And they're stupid people that won't go to heaven. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh... But that's the deal. Um, they, they've taken lightning strikes and they've made it no longer an objective-based kill streak. Now it is just a freaking ego-pumping kills that don't help you win game bullshit kill streak. That's uh, that's the lightning strike. It is what it is. Um, they made it worthless by adding nearly a second delay to it. Um, next, bouncing Betty. They've increased the grace period between the trigger and the activation by a fifth of a second. I suppose that's a good thing. It seemed like bouncing Betty's would just sort of insta kill, whereas in previous CODs you could lay down and go prone and, and you know, save yourself. A sensor grenade. I never used these things. It's kind of like a um, like a, almost like a UAV grenade that you drop, and uh, they increase the range. It's a thousand units, whatever the hell that is, um, and the frequency is now 800 milliseconds between pings. And the amount of time that players appear is six seconds, six milliseconds. Um, whatever. Sensor grenades got a slight buff. Maybe they'll be more useful now. I hardly ran them, and I hardly see them. Concussion grenades or stun grenades, they've decreased the movement penalty and turn speed penalty when hit. That's a good thing, right? Because you know, it seemed like if you got hit by a stun, you were just, like, insta-dead forever. It just it lasted way too long. And and if you, can't if you can survive a stun, then go play the lottery, because that thing was guaranteed death they would just take your character lock them there and, and you know freeze them until someone came along and killed you so it's a good thing the stun grenades are not going to be so OP anymore speaking of OP SMGs a lot of changes to the SMGs. so check this out all SMGs have had these three changes every one of them increased hip fire recoil increased max hip fire spread so you know the if you just shoot without aiming, it went from, I guess, 475 to 5 to give you some idea of you know, how much it spread. But um, if you're not aiming down sights with an SMG, the bullet spread is going to go a little wider, so it'll take f more bullets to get the ones you need on target to get your kill. And then every one of them has reduced bullet penetration, which was the only change that was rumored, by the way. I thought the SMGs were going to have a very slight nerf, and that shooting through walls was slightly less effective, but no. Every one of them has more hip fire recoil, every one of them has more max spread on the hip fire, and every one of them has reduced bullet penetration. And then, there's more. My two favorite <laughs> SMGs, the MSMC and the PD-57, PDW-57, have both had increased recoil. So, not only is the hip fire recoil and the hip spread and the re bullet penetration worse on every SMG, my two favorites have more recoil. I... I didn't feel like the SMGs were totally OP. I felt like the maps were designed for SMGs. You know, it seems like there's hardly any long lines of sight. It, you bump into people in the same room or within SMG distance all the time, and therefore using anything else is pretty tough. Now, as I learn the maps more, I find ways to use other guns on them, but uh, the SMGs were well suited to these maps, therefore the SMGs were kind of dominant in the play, and they've made SMGs worse. You know, well, I'll play it, and I'll reserve opinion. But um, so far, it's almost as if this patch has been designed to screw my favorite things about this game. Uh, but there's more! Assault rifles! So, uh, the SMGs got nerfed, 
the assault rifles got buffed. So, and here's the deal. Every single assault rifle has reduced idle sway. If you don't know what idle sway is, it's when you look down sights and don't do anything else. The sight kind of like moves around and, and you know, it just, it, it, it sways. Well, that's the idle sway. And every single assault rifle is going to stay more like directly on target. Like if you're, if you see a guy head glitching and then he ducks and you put it right where you expect his head to be, it's going to stay right on that pixel and, uh, and allow you to, you know, use the assault rifles better at long range because there's less idle sway. There's more. The XM8 has two changes. The reduced, they reduced the lethal range for, of three hit kills from 250 to 50 inches. So you pretty much have to be right on top of a guy to get a three hit kill with the XM8. And with, and the XM8, no, okay, listen, the next three are the same. The XM8 was select fire. The foul was select fire, and the 556 was select fire. All have increased recoil. So if you shoot those bursts, you're less likely to get every one of those bullets on target. You're more likely to need two and three bursts to kill a guy with the XM8, the FML, FAL, and the SWAT 556 when you have select fire on them. That's the deal. And then the MTAR, they made the auto aim values consistent with the other assault rifles. That one I'm stuck on. I don't know if the MTAR had better auto aim or worse, but now it's going to line up with the other assault rifles. I always liked the MTAR, so maybe that was why. Maybe it had better auto aim. So I should do a video to explain what auto aim is. Not everybody knows. But uh, keep going. Sniper rifles. So listen, every single sniper rifle had these two changes made to it. They all have increased hip fire spread, so you're less likely to get those no scopes. And they all had increased fi hip fire spread when you add the laser scope. So that's a change. You're going to have to actually get your, your sight on target when you use a, a sniper rifle more often than you did before. That's the deal. Next, the MTAR. Oh, oh wait, wait, sorry, I said that one already. The XPR-50 has increased the recoil slightly. So, um, you know, that is what it is. It'll be tougher to get those follow-up hits with the XPR-50 than it used to be. Here's one that impacts me a ton. Shotguns. The 870 is going to have less one-hit kill range by 45 inches, which is about like a meter and a third. So, um, this, the... 870 is going to have less long range shots than it used to have fewer one hit kills you're going to have to you know shoot the guy take cover while it, it pumps and then uh, you know shoot the guy again more often than you used to oh man you know i really like the i had fun using it and they're nerfing the fun out of so many things i liked about this game pistols the b23r and the cat 40 have reduced their headshot multiplier from 1.4 to 1. if you don't know how this works in short every character has 100 health the bullets tend to do between like 20 and 50 damage and when you shoot them in the head there's a multiplier so they tend to do well shucks i don't even know what that is but between like 30 and 70 damage when you shoot them in the head something like that anyway that multi you no longer get a bonus for shooting guys in the head with those two pistols so you're going to more often take uh, extra bullets to kill a guy with pistols which i guess is good i don't know in previous cods you were at a huge disadvantage when you used a pistol that was the deal the only upside of that pistol was how quickly it worked it, it could aim really fast and um you could swap weapons really quick with it but if you're trying to go up against any other weapon the pistol was kind of at a disadvantage in this game it doesn't feel like that's the case it feels like pistols are viable choices and i see a lot of guys running around pistol only maybe pistols are going to go back to their position of less valuable than they used to be. So those are the big game-changing things for... The, the, those are the weapons and the lethals and the non-lethals that have been impacted by this patch. Like I said, the Xbox will get it Saturday, and for the PS3 guys, I don't know. I haven't seen an announced release date on it. But PS3 is typically easier to release patches for, so I wouldn't expect it to take very long to get over to you guys. There are some other things that have been addressed by this and like I said description will have all of it but I'm gonna cover some of the highlights players with the black hat PDA can no longer hack a care package faster than the owner can capture it that's a really cool thing <laughs> uh, they addressed an exploit where modified console hackers could maliciously spread infected film to other users so now theater mode should be back on and the 10th prestige glitchers won't be able to do their thing anymore so that's that's a good thing I added a failsafe to prevent spawn trapping in CTF, so I guess you'll be able to flip the spawns more in CTF than you used to be able to do. That's kind of a cool thing. 
Multi-team games are no longer a tie if one of the team quits. So what's going to happen is, it used to be that in multi-team, if uh, if a team quit out, then you know it would just be a draw, and that would suck. Now the remaining teams will be able to play and go for that win, which is kind of a cool thing. I wonder what happens. I guess that yeah, the, the other two teams will get losses. Of course, that's what will happen. And the last big thing I'll mention is that players using Ghost and a Suppressor while moving no longer show up on the UAV. So that's a pretty significant prog they had there. You know, if you've got a Ghost and a Suppressor and you're moving, you're not supposed to be on the enemy's UAV, and they were. So there's a bunch more stuff. Uh, check the description of this video and you'll, you'll catch it. But this was a huge patch. I feel like I have to relearn which guns I like now. My PDW, my MSMC have had big changes. My TAR has had a change. Lightning Strike has been screwed up. And uh, stun grenades are less powerful than they used to be. Like I, I, this is a, this is a significant thing for those of you that are into Call of Duty. And, you know, uh, we'll have to see how we like the new version of the game. So check that out and don't miss the description which explains the same stuff. So as usual, if you like the video, give it a like. If you're new, just click subscribe in the top right and see more stuff from me. On the left, search and destroy commentary on Black Ops 2. And on the right, I'm going to talk about PKA for just a second. We did something different. We got Big Wax. Big Wax is a rap artist from Wax and Herbal Tea. They make amazing stuff. I like it, actually, and I don't like a lot of rap. Um, but what's really cool is we did something different. Uh, it's not just the show with you know people from the COD community again and again and again. I love that Wings reached out, got a guest who you know wasn't... You know, either the same guy or a variation of the same guy that, that we often have. So, you know, we're, we're, we've got a lot of big names that we're reaching out to and trying to just bring something a little different instead of just, you know, repeats of the show all the time. And last night was a really good one. The PKA is on kind of a roll. Last two weeks I thought were really strong. The Road to Black Ops 2 stuff that led up to the game I thought was really strong. I, I felt like, um, I feel like PKA, not every show is going to be the best one we've ever made, but lately, you know, we've had some real winners and I'm proud of the work that we're doing. So check that out and have a good day.